So right now we're just going to go and go through an overview of how to determine if something is going to go through an E1 reaction, an E2 reaction, SN1 reaction, or SN2 reaction. Okay. So here I've made a chart. Uh, this is in your PowerPoint, but I just want to go through it to make sure you guys understand what this chart means. Okay. So good nucleophiles here, strong bases here, weak bases here, poor nucleophiles there. Right. So and there are some common things, and that's what we'll, we'll go over. Okay. So examples of strong bases that are that are good nucleophiles are things like OH minus and CH3O minus, right? These are good nucleophiles that are also strong bases, okay? So if we have a primary carbon, which I've done here, so this is primary, basically primary alkyl halide by saying this is, is your halide and this is the carbon in question, right? So this carbon right here is primary because there's only one R group, right? This is going to be secondary because there are two R groups, and this is going to be tertiary because there are three gr R groups attached to the carbon that has this alkyl halide, that has this uh, hal halide group, and that's tertiary, okay? So that's what I mean here. So primary is gonna go through an SN2 reaction. Uh, secondary is gonna go through an E2 reaction, and tertiary is going to go through an E2 reaction as well, okay? So if on a test you're faced with a question and you're not sure which one is going to happen, uh, use this chart to your advantage, okay? It's, I'd say memorize it, but I don't like using that term, but it's probably best to just memorize it. So poor nucleophiles that are also strong bases, think about things that are kind of bulky, things that don't really want to um, like add on to places. So things like T Bu tert butoxide is what I'm writing up. If you guys want to know what these things stand for, and a hydride and DBU. These are all good bases. However, they are weak nucleophiles. Okay. Primary is going to go through E2. Secondary is also going to go through E2. And tertiary is going to go through. Guess what? E2. Okay? So that's your like easy section, right? If you can recognize a poor nucleophile that is a strong base, it's never going to go through a substitution reaction. And uh, since we do have a strong base, it's going to go through E2 reactions always. Okay? So now dealing with weak bases, this is where we sort of have a gray area because with weak bases, you have two, co two competitors now, right? SN1 and E1 because both of those use. Uh, poor nucleophiles, and um, good nucleophiles um, for weak bases will fall into SN2 and SN1. So let's take a look at that, right? So what's an example of a good nucleophile that's a weak base? Um, so things like halides, so Cl, um, iodine, so I minus, uh, sulfur compounds, um, Cn minus, and N2 minus, okay? These are all good nucleophiles that are weak bases, and if we have a primary, it, so that's again that, it's gonna go through an SN2 reaction only. If we have a secondary, it's gonna only go through an SN, it's gonna go through an SN2 reaction as well. And if we have tertiary, it's gonna go through SN1. SN1 because we have a very, very stable carbocation intermediate, right? Tertiary, and this happens because, again, nucleophile uh, and weak base, okay? So now, lastly, we have this section. Basically, with this section, poor nucleophile, weak base, you have a mixture of all the different reactions that can happen. I know it's pretty hard to tell, but generally, questions should ask you to differentiate or they will specify. So you do get a mixture of all uh, substitution and elimination reactions and elimination okay so that's your overview of um, how to determine if something is going to go through a substitution reaction what type of substitution reaction or an elimination reaction what type of elimination reaction uh, thank you and good luck